I got involved with Rocksteady Boxing through Dan Dale. He's the one that found out about it. Well, I'm a former professor at SEU. I was here for 17 years and retired from SEU. And uh, about nine years ago, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And uh, I was going down to St. George for some physical therapy. And one of the therapists down there brought out some boxing gloves. He said, let's try this boxing. And I quite liked it. It was a good experience. So I thought, well, maybe we can get start, something started here in Cedar City. He looked up rock steady boxing and was really interested in it. And so he was trying to find someone in the community to, to help get this going. And they said, well, first thing we've got to do is get you hooked up with a rural health scholar student. And they said, we know just the guy. And they introduced me to gents. And I walked in, and there was this imposingly large gentleman with a ready smile and a firm handshake. And, and immediately we hit it off. And so we started doing what we needed to do to get Rock City Boxing going. I was diagnosed about two years ago, but I think I had symptoms before that. And I was, when I got the diagnosis, of course, I was surprised and shocked. And I thought, well, you know, then they. It may take a toll on me, but it will never beat me. I'm going to fight it all the way. So what Parkinson's disease does is there's a part of your brain, it's called the substantia nigra, and it produces dopamine. The cells in this part of your brain produce dopamine. And dopamine's a neurotransmitter, and we use it in everything from movement to our, the way we think and our thoughts. So it's a really important neurotransmitter. And what happens in Parkinson's disease is this part of the brain is dying off. So those cells that produce dopamine, they're dying away. And then all of a sudden your body has less dopamine than it needs and your movement and your thoughts are affected. Some scientists started to suggest that they had some evidence that the brain could adapt and maybe even heal some damaged cells. And they call that neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity just refers to the ability of the brain to find new connections, do some repair a little bit. When, when there are parts that have been damaged. So the question then was, what's the trigger? How do we start this neuroplasticity process? Does it just start on its own? Uh, and the only answer that, that seemed to be a valid answer was uh, rigorous physical activity. And this program's helping with people with Parkinson's disease because it focuses on lots of the things that um, Parkinson's is trying to take away from them, like their balance, their coordination, Things, but also we're actually delaying the progression of the disease with the force intense exercise. Those cells in the brain are being protected as people are working out really hard. We start out with stretching and, and balance and then we go into the routines. We do boxing with the heavy bags, the speed bags. We do a lot of toning and car work, bicycling, everything, the whole spectrum. And in that workout, we'll, we'll do all sorts of stuff. We'll do a lot of boxing. We'll work on coordination. We'll work on some fine motor skills. I feel exhilarated when I'm finished. I look forward to coming every time. Everyone goes, who has gone to their doctor comes back saying, my doctor's told me I'm getting a little bit better, I'm, that, that I'm doing very well. Keep it up. Whatever you're doing, keep it up. Um, I went to a new doctor, and he didn't know what I was doing before. But he said, whatever you're doing, keep it up. <laughs> I think it's important that SU offers this because there's just really not a lot of resources here in this area. For that reason, I think it's really valuable for our community. I think it gives all these people an opportunity to fight back against their disease. It's a win-win for everybody. The students that come and help the volunteers are fantastic. It gives them experience and they can help us to improve. And I think the best part is the camaraderie with the other people. They're great. There's never a negative vibe from anybody. They're always upbeat and, and they're glad to be here. And the group is really strong. We have a real tight relationship. Quality of life is a big thing. To me, what it's given most of the participants is a little longer day. A chance to spend more time doing the things that you want to do. The truth is I'm very proud of it. I think it's maybe my last, my last opportunity to do something significant for other people. It, it makes me feel great to be a part of something like this and it's really rewarding. You, know, you never stand taller than when you boost somebody else on your shoulders. 
And I think that's what's, what's happened for us here.